and as believers in Christ. So, Father, I pray a covering over every person's mind, the blood of Jesus Christ to cover their minds. The Holy Spirit quicken their minds to listen to your word and understand your word. So your purpose for which, O oh God, you've given this word will accomplish, will be accomplished in their lives and in my life as I speak it out. Protect from them from every distraction, every assignment of the enemy to steal the word, we cancel it in Jesus' name. And we declare that your word will go through to the heart of your people. Your word will find a place in their lives. And your word will do the work that you have assigned it to do in Jesus' name. We want to know you more, Father. We want to know you and live according to your will so that we will be prepared and fashioned to have a place in your kingdom. Your kingdom is coming very soon. We do not know when. But you say we should occupy, get ourselves ready. So, Father, we submit to you right now through your word in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. We, last, last week, we finished the lesson on kingdom living through the power of endurance. Through the power of endurance. And today... We will start a new uh, series, Kingdom Living Through the Power of Faith. You know, from the beginning, men uh, slipped into disobedience. And disobedience in the Garden of Eden has brought to men all kinds of troubles and corruption and more disobedience and rebellion. Amen. So God, through Jesus Christ, is bringing unto himself a new generation of people. A people who will choose to obey the living God. And as they do obey God, they are renewed continually in their spirit to obey God some more. And they, they take on the divine nature of God. The Bible says uh, that we should abide in Jesus, and Jesus abide in us. Abiding in Jesus Christ is learning his ways, his word, and then practicing what we know. The letter from John says that if we do what we have been taught, then we would abide in him. And it is very important that we abide in Jesus, because he is our life. He is the way. He is the truth. He is our protection. It is in him that we find our fulfillment. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Because this world is dark. And there is evil in this world that can corrupt your life if you are not abiding in Jesus. Hallelujah. So it is important also to know about faith because a faith come from our obedience to what God has said. You know, the Bible says that the demons, they believe what God's word says. But the difference between you and me and the demons is that we do what we believe. It is doing what you believe that brings you into faith. So it is good to, that we are taking this journey through faith. And I want to create a background uh, for this uh, journey. So we, I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In Christ, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Not some, but every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. So you have to have passion for the Lord and his spiritual blessings. It is for us today. It is for you. It is for me. You know, so we have to have a passion. We have to desire it. Because everything that God has given to me, to you and to me in Christ, we have to desire it and have passion for it. 
and it will come to us. We have to have a strong passion for the Lord and his spiritual blessing, and it will produce fire in us. It will produce fire in you. And the fire of the Lord requires, you know, every fire that is set up requires wood to burn or fuel. So let's take wood. And the wood has to be broken to fit the fire, where the fire is burning. If the fire is burning here, you cannot put the wood somewhere and expect it to burn. So we, cut, we break the wood, wood into pieces and then we place it on the fire so it can burn. You know, the wood must be dry and broken to fit the fire. It must be broken and dry. Now the fire of the Lord keeps us our passion going. So our passion and our diligence in the work of righteousness and obedience in our life circumstances will create that fire, that, that wood, provide that wood for the fire of the Lord to burn in our lives. When the fire of the Lord falls, it consumes what we have provided. Hallelujah. It consumes what we, provide, we have provided. And it produces the divine, the spiritual blessings. It produces the spiritual blessings. The divine becomes evident when we offer our body as a holy sacrifice. And you live by the promises through a submitted lifestyle. The sacrifice becomes evident when you offer your body as a holy sacrifice. And you live by the promises through a submitted lifestyle. So you have to be submitted to God. We have to su submit it to God and offer our bodies as a, a holy sacrifice. The level of submission of yourself to God determines the level of the manifestation of the divine in you and through you. So submission is very important in the Christian work. Submission to the living God, our Savior, the one that has saved us. Very important to submit to him. Now, let's look at Second Peter and chapter one and verse four. Second Peter chapter one and verse four. It says, By which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desires. See, there are sinful desires in this world that can corrupt our life. And God has given us his promises. And he's saying to you and me that if you live by his promises, if you let his word guide your daily decisions and choices, and how you relate to people, and how you live, then you would escape corruption that is in this world. That comes by lustful desires. And then you take on the divine nature. It's like as you give up the worldly pleasures that corrupt, you are submitting to God. And as you do that, his divine nature manifests in you. It grows in you. It grows in you. So the divine nature of God is the nature of the new creation because the Bible says that the new creation, which is hidden in Christ, is, it has the likeness of God through righteousness. And he has the mind of Christ. Amen? True is holy, is righteous, and it's like God. It's hidden in Christ. 
And the divine nature, it comes with power and authority to walk triumphant in the earth. And it can reach into the spiritual realm where most of our spiritual battles take place. And that's why Paul says that we do not contend with flesh and blood, but we contend with principalities and powers and wicked spirits in the spiritual realm, in the heavenly places. So we receive strength, authority, and power through that divine nature that we take on through our new creation for our battles, our daily battles, because every day comes with its own challenge. Every day of our lives comes with its own challenge. And we need the strength of God to face every challenge and respond to their influence correctly and overcome in each challenge so that our divine